I think perhaps I've learned how to switch it on. I get the answers to things and I'm thinking, why, do, why am I thinking about that? You just know, but I don't know how I know, <laughs> which sounds a bit, um, a bit odd. I think it's something to do with um, being able to put yourself to one side, which is what is common to all dowsing, surely. I, I really don't know where the answers come from. It's the universe, it can be God, it can be anything that you are calling on. You see the world in a slightly different way. There's somebody up there helps us. It's always interesting, it's always varied. It's not me. You could never get bored as a dowser. All of this, essentially, are yogic techniques. And it's a, 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 a question, one of my big questions in my mind is why science has not looked at, or psychology, has not actually looked at techniques that yogi, uh, yogins have been using for thousands of years. And all of these techniques that we're talking about, dowsing, remote viewing, and all these things, are techniques developed by yogas. My specialization is in earth energy. I think the simplest possible way to talk about earth energy is to say that it's the earth's nervous system. And to understand that, you've got to understand that the earth is a dynamic, changing, living, pulsing being. And it's, it's got every right to have a nervous system as, as we have. Every person has little subtle energy bodies around us, biomagnetic fields. This is a, a, a geomagnetic field, if you like, which interacts with our biomagnetic fields and has profound effects on our physical being. It's infinitely complex. It's four-dimensional, it could be six-dimensional, we don't know. And many people pick up parts of this thing, which are certain kinds of grid on the Earth. I pick up energy lines, which are part of its whole system. And they, they are dynamic. Where they curve and where they cross are very special places, very sacred places. Many of them are ancient sacred sites. Sacred sites, of course, were recognized by, by the old people, the Neolithic people. And uh, they were open, much more open to the subtle energies of the Earth. And when they, when they, they were nomadic and when they walked around they would find a place where they, they, they felt good and as soon as they stayed there they started to commune with the cosmos and that's their, their form of prayer. Their consciousness affected the earth and the earth responded and they could feel the response and we underestimate their knowledge and their, their, their ability to relate to the cosmos and the movements of the sun and the moon and the stars and, and things like that and they weren't diverted by all the things that, that we are diverted by. We really ought to know more about it because it has such a powerful effect on, on everything we do. The thing about dowsing that's not really understood is that everybody thinks it's, it's that dowsers can douse for everything. And in fact, this is true to a certain extent, but it's like saying everybody can play the piano, and, and that's true to a certain extent. But dowsers, like surgeons, like all sorts of different people, specialise in different subjects. And in fact, recently, I, I, I uh, wanted to find some water on my, my land. And although I've been dowsing for 26 years, I got a specialist water dowser in because they are the people who really know how to do it. For this site, I think the yield would be around about somewhere between 150 and 200 gallons an hour. It's more water than any domestic supply would. Have. It would it would run quite a lot of farm supplies. Then I got on to Aaron Bray, who has the drilling rig, the compressors, and all, all you need to put whacking great holes in the ground. We always douse the supply before we drill it. Geological surveys can only tell you so much, but water dowsing, you get a good choice. Some people believe you can drill anywhere and they tell you that the water on their land is not always the case. Um, you know, the odd thing, geology affects things sometimes. There's different factors that can affect things. Most of the time, you know, we're probably about 93% successful with, with dowsing. When the guys were put, put the, the first drill down, Ralph said it would be about 120 feet. Well, they started to get it about 110, and that is not bad. <laughs> it's not far out at all. So uh, I'm absolutely delighted. This is a really practical demonstration of dowsing works. This water is 125 feet down. How else can you know that there is water there? apart from by dowsing. You've got to be very open to these things and not um, block, block anything. Just let the feelings and everything flow. You can feel that pull and it does it despite you and that is a lovely thing when people realise it's not up to them. It's like opening a door and you look in and you think, oh, I don't know whether I want to go there. So you close the door again. And when you're ready, you'll open that door more and more and more. And you realise there's so much to learn. Once people start it, I think it catches hold of them and becomes very important.
and it's fascinating. It's very exciting. It is a built-in human capability. And a privilege to do it. Thank you.